first day of shooting, we picked the most difficult set ever. Smoke, mirrors in every direction. Love it. Welcome to Twilight. You're listening to Another Bite of Twilight, a podcast where we look back on our obsession with the Twilight Saga and continue to freak out ten years later. Hello. Happy Twilight Tuesday. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Mel. And I'm Kel. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining us. If you guys are new, we are a Twilight podcast that talks (laughs) about different topics in the Twilight series. Sometimes we read the books, sometimes we watch the movies, and sometimes we just pick a random topic and go with it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally random. Mm-hmm. Like, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be not even Twilight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we've done the hair in Twilight. We've done the fashion. We've done all the books and the movies. And yeah, yeah. now we, today we are covering the New Moon DVD commentary, which is hard to come by if you don't own the DVD. As it should be, buy the DVD, people. Yeah. <laughs> I know, really, Lionsgate should be sponsoring this episode because <laughs> I'm sure a few people might go out and buy the DVD if they don't own it already. I Maybe. mean, some people might not have DVD players, though. So it's commentary on the commentary. On the commentary. We used to talk about this a lot in a hypothetical way, like, oh, would anybody want to do this? But we did it for the first movie, mm-hmm. Peeps apparently want more my friend carrie said she wants commentary on the commentary so you're getting it it's commentary on the commentary yes and so this dvd commentary is with director chris whites of new moon and then the editor peter lambert peter lambert which kelly listened to this before and she had no memory of someone else being i didn't remember peter lambert was in it but to be fair he doesn't say much he doesn't say a lot and apparently he's not even watching the movie but then i think he actually was because then he kept saying things like oh the music i can hear like i don't know no he said he could only hear it through oh chris yeah oh yeah he really wasn't saying much but yeah i hope Part of me hopes this episode is shorter than the actual movie. Yeah, it will be. How long is the movie to watch? Because you could just watch the commentary yourself. But they really do say some interesting things. You learn a lot. Funny things. I always thought... Yeah. I, I do think I have listened to this a couple times when I was younger. But I always thought that the commentaries without Rob and Kristen would be a little bit less interesting. Because... Yeah. You know, you don't really get that dynamic, but I do think you learn way more. Whereas, yeah. Rob and Chris don't know anything. They don't know anything. They just kind of like talk about, just like, oh, this is the day you, uh, this is the day you, uh, you, you were in a give bad me mood. a weird look. Yeah. yeah. Like, they just say like weird stuff. Yeah. Boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really have anything to say. They don't really know like everything that goes into it. And I was saying, watching this commentary, that I feel like film students should watch this because yeah. it was just, yeah. you learn so much about the different shot names and everything that goes into it's it. True. And things that we didn't even notice about the movie before. Wait, before we get into it, mm-hmm. I'm going to bring the energy down. Okay. Make it really serious and sad because something happened recently in the fandom that we oh, yes. need to acknowledge. Yeah, we talked about this a bit on our Patreon episode, but we want to offer our condolences to Gregory Tyree Boyce. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he just goes by Greg, who played Tyler Crowley in the first Twilight. He unfortunately passed away a couple Crazy. weeks ago from when this episode is going to air. Um, so we went off at the age 30, 30 and his girlfriend passed away at only 27 years old. And yeah, there's been a lot of speculation of how in our Patreon episode, we were saying that people were saying that it was murder. I think that was wrong. wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Now (laughs) they're saying that there's no criminal activity suspected and likely it was probably a drug overdose, which is extremely sad. Wow. Very tragic. Yeah. Mm, Unfortunately, I feel like this time period is probably testing a lot of people's addiction problems. And it's just... Oh, yeah, maybe. Very, very sad. I didn't think of that. Yeah, so... 
somebody from Twilight. Yeah, we were saying that even though Gregory was only in the first movie, which I, f- I would have loved to have seen him in the other films as well. It's kind of a shame that they didn't cast him. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Why yeah. wasn't he just part of the friend group? I don't know. Like, why did they make it only these four people? It's kind of not believable. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe yeah. he wasn't available for it. People, or... are, people have their friend groups. People have their cliques. Yeah, but, but there's still other people. It's like you really only see them. Yeah, but as the as New Moon Eclipse, as the movies go on, I feel like they have less and less. They're less important. High school yeah. Peeps. So, yeah. sadly, only in Twilight. Yeah. But he did have such a memorable presence performance in twilight and of course if it weren't for him bella would have never learned of edward's secret with the whole van thing and (laughs) yeah he really was a catalyst for the whole story my dad was saying that this weekend catalyst yeah i was just saying that i've been hearing that word so much lately really yeah hmm i I feel like i haven't heard it lately it's just (laughs) it might be just one of those things that i don't know you you just start noticing. Mm-hmm. It's probably just my own life, but I swear to God, I I used to never really even know that word. And then is it like, me? Am I saying it all no, the time? No, no, it's, <laughs> it's not you. It's just the universe. It's my word lately. I <laughs> like it. I think it's a good word. Yeah. Anyway, he was his character was catalyst mm-hmm. for the whole story, and it's tragic and shocking. Yes. And, and just so fucking sad. Go out to his mm-hmm. friends and family. There's really not a lot you can say. Um, no. So, bringing the energy back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To commentary on the commentary. Yeah, this... Commentary? I really commentary. enjoyed watching commentary? it. and I'm We s- just watched it. Yeah, we just literally turned One it off. One second to go. I am very excited to return back to New Moon. I feel like we haven't talked about New Moon in a while. Mm-hmm. And so I, it was cool. Yeah, I have to say, I love New Moon. Mm-hmm. It's so funny how you, you know, we were just saying when we were watching it, we used to not like New Moon when we were younger because yeah. Edward is in it less. And with this podcast, we've been rewatching it and rereading the books. And we found that we just love the book and the movie so much. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I mean, we have this newfound appreciation for it. It's so beautiful. I mean, once you go through heartbreak, it's like yeah. so relatable. I know, yeah. When I was a kid, especially with the book, I, I didn't like having Edward not there. And I thought the yeah. story was That's too... That was immature of us. Yeah, I thought it was too depressing. <laughs> but... Now I almost like Bella's grief in a way. Yeah, like I love it. I really appreciate it because you can just feel how visceral that pain is. This pillow, we're in our apartment. Yeah, we live together. <laughs> we're, we're not breaking social distancing because <laughs> we're roommates. But this pillow Mel has put next to me is giving me Jake. wolf vibes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like furry. It's some really ugly... <laughs> furry pillow that I have in my room. It does look like a creature. Yeah, it doesn't. It's disgusting. (laughs) It's disgusting. Oh, Jake. I wanted, when I originally was decorating my room, I wanted all woodsy looking pillows for my bed. And so this is the first one I bought and it's the only one I ended up buying. I Mm. had intent to buy more, Mm. but I just gave up. So I think it's cool. Maybe I'll buy more this summer. What about his gross to you? Does it really look like an animal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's, it's just not like a pretty pillow. <laughs> and I, I always find that I'm resting my head on it and I'm like, oh, it doesn't feel good because <laughs> it doesn't even feel like real fur or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it really does look like a dog's fur. It does. Like, it's seriously a dog. <laughs> You just have a dead dog in your bed. That's what it looks like. It's not pretty. I my square dog. Thought process was if I had a ton of pillows like that, they would look more I think it's cool. Woodsy. I mean, it does fit the woodsy vibe. Yeah. Yeah. My room. I tried to make it look woodsy and botanical. I guess. Yeah. 
inspired by Twilight. I think I think it worked. I think you pulled it off. Thank you. Thank you. I still need to add more things, but anyway, commentary on the commentary. I just gotta say, I think it's really cool. I don't know what you would expect. I mean, he's the director, but Chris mm-hmm. White's does seem really into it. Yeah, he does. Like he was. I mean, this came out like ten years ago, but we have to get him on the show. Yeah, I mean, we have to, guys. I honestly feel inspired to just like message a ton of people from the series and try to get anybody on the show. Do it. My college roommate actually she is a news reporter and Mm -hmm. every single thursday she's been having a quarantine live instagram thing and she always has a theme like it will be like tiktok stars or youtubers or whatever and somehow in reality tv stars and somehow she manages to get (laughs) some well-known people i mean not super well-known but people who you know a lot of people of our generation know just by dming them I am so not extroverted enough to do that. Every Anytime I've had to interview people, I'm like so nervous approaching them. I don't yeah. know why. I know. I would feel especially nervous live on Instagram. Whoa. I'll try it. Do I send like a generic message for everybody or do I have to personalize it? <laughs> I think you should personalize it a little bit. A little bit. I don't bit. want it to seem like spam. Yeah. People hate that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll do it. I might I mean, do Don't it. you hate that? I hate it. Yeah. yeah. I think I'll do it from my regular Instagram. Oh. That way they don't just see like, you know, like a Twilight. They don't think it's just like a fan account. Interesting. Do you think that would make a difference? Maybe I'll do it from both know. accounts. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you guys just are getting that. some <laughs> behind the scenes. Um, um, sorry, I didn't even offer to help with that. But, um, I'm probably not going to. That's talk. okay. No, I could. I could. Well, if we get Chris White's on the show, know that I am solely responsible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad. Uh, no, I... I answer yeah. something kelly <laughs> no kelly does all the editing for the podcast as i'm sure you guys know so she puts in yeah. all the work no, way no, more no. than i do no, into this no, show that's not true yeah no <laughs> it's not i think so and it doesn't even come out good yes it does <laughs> yes it does <laughs> Oh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Are you nervous? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, yeah. Oh my gosh. So I was wondering where is director Chris White's from? Because his accent was all over the place. It was. It was I really throwing me I, off. I'm pretty sure he's American, but it's. I think he was picking up Peter Lamberg's accent. Yeah, he must. Right think, off the bat, it says. I just said that word. Bat. <laughs> so it was like Chicago. It says he's an American film director. I mean, he let could, me see if he spent some time. Yeah, he could be abroad. very worldly because he's a director. <laughs> Maybe he just spends some time all born over the place. Born in New York City, son of mm. actress Susan Conner and Berlin-born novelist slash menswear designer John White. Okay, so maybe he has a bit of like a German maybe influence. Grandson of Czech-born agent. Hmm. Wow, he has a lot of interesting people. On his maternal side, and then... Someone, our next-door neighbor is watching an action movie (laughs) that you can hear. Yeah, I hope you guys can't hear. (laughs) Uh, Oh, oh my gosh. When he was 14 years old, he went to boarding school in London. Ah, that makes sense. Oh my gosh. That makes a lot of sense. Because he was pronouncing some words with a British accent. Yeah. It was really hurting me out. (laughs) I thought it was just because he was picking that up from... Peter. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> that is fascinating. Chris White's, we've talked about it before. As we <laughs> are getting older, we have an attraction for him. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know he's how I really... He's a cute feel. dad. He's a cute personality, <laughs> at least. He does. No, he was really cute. There were things he was saying. Yeah. <laughs> he seems cool. I like how he was being kind of... Um, I bet he... Oh, what we're saying? Oh, I like how he was being arrogant sometimes. Yeah. Like shots that he was really proud of. Yeah. Like he was like, here's another example of my genius. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the other guy was really pumping him up too. And was like, you came up with this, right? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes he actually didn't. <laughs> I'm not young, Chris White's. Is anything going to come up? Mm. What else has Chris White's directed? He direct. He's directed quite a lot. He directed The Golden Compass. Oh, yes. Which they recently made a TV version of that same story, His Dark Materials. But he also did About a Boy mm. and American Pie. Oh, okay, yeah. That's That's a really big movie. Yeah, that is a big one. It's kind of crazy. David Slade is the one who really hadn't worked on any other movies, right? Yeah. He and Paul directed and produced American Pie. Well, that's kind of crazy. For some reason, I always I've never seen that. thought that Taylor Lautner did one of these commentaries, but he's not on any of them. Yeah, why is I that? I don't get why. I would love to hear a Taylor Lautner commentary. He has Nobody thinks he has anything valuable to say. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a boy toy. Well, in the <laughs> Eclipse commentary, Rob and Kristen joke like, oh, Taylor wanted to be here, but he's working out or something. We don't know. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, think he wasn't even invited. No, it makes me think that he was invited, but I'm just oh. into it. I don't know. Well, should we get into it, which is the things that we learned? We should. I was just going to say, though, I don't think I've watched commentary for anything but Twilight. I don't think I have either. Do they even <laughs> still make commentaries anymore when people aren't really buying DVDs? I still buy DVDs. No, but I think you're an outlier in that. Mm, I hope they do. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. What's the most recent DVD I've bought? I haven't bought a DVD in a really long time. Kelly's getting up. She's like, going through her DVDs. She's looking at the DVD for... Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts, Beast, which I have previously said on this podcast is not even a good movie. It's okay. I like the first one. Huh, well, these know. ones with DVD commentary, I think you had to buy the special deluxe edition to get that, right? I don't know, because it's actually on disc one. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. maybe not. What's on disc two? Just the behind the scenes? All the special features. Yeah, so I had I have said on the podcast before there was one night when my DVD player, my portable DVD player, wasn't working, and I wanted mm-hmm. to clean my room and watch the Eclipse commentary, and so I bought the <laughs> special edition, special feature version on Amazon for Eclipse, thinking it would have the DVD commentary, and it didn't. Like yeah. you can really only get the DVD commentary on the DVD. Who would have thought that? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> There's nowhere you can stream it at all. Which makes me think a lot of people listening to this might have never listened to the commentary before. Maybe. I just feel, I like, I haven't bought a DVD in a while, but if I really, really love a movie, mm-hmm. I do want to own it. But a lot of people don't own DVD players anymore. I guess, but there are people that are into it. Like. Mm-hmm. Criterion Collection DVDs or whatever. I mean, same with why I buy records. It's like if I really, really am crazy about something. I do think if you want to need it, if you want to own something, the only way you can own it is to buy the DVD. Really, because I mean, my family we used to have Xfinity, and yeah. we bought all these movies that we owned on Xfinity. Oh my gosh! And, and then you lost them. Yeah, and then it dawned on me once yeah. they switched over to Files, like holy shit, we don't own those movies anymore. Yeah. Because they're just There's win- no ownership in that. Yeah, or even like with Amazon, I bought movies on it, and then it's like I couldn't take screenshots of the movie because of copyright issues. Yeah. And I couldn't watch it not on the internet, you know? Like, you really don't yeah. own it. With streaming and stuff, there's, yeah, no ownership. You mm-hmm. can't, like, make mix CDs anymore from... Your Spotify or whatever, mm-hmm. it's, you're just borrowing it. And I it disturbs me kind of because Because they things, can take it off. Yeah, like Lady yeah. Gaga did that. I mean, I own the Art Pop CD, so I'm covered, but she got rid of Do What She Want because it's like the R. Kelly song. Mm. It's like, what the heck? I actually really like that song. And historically, it just seems wrong to me to erase something like that. Like, I don't know. I think yeah. when you put it out there, it's... It's too late. It's already out there. So it's weird to me that people can, like, take their music down. Yeah. Freaks me out. Yeah, I agree. Or we can change. Oh, I hate that, that, like, 
they can change things right away. Like when Game of Thrones had that cup mm. in the background, and then they're like, oh, we already fixed it. Like, I don't know. For some reason, that bothers me. Or like, didn't they do that for cats? Yeah, it's they like, did it for what cats. What the heck? Like, I don't know. I think things should be done yeah, when they're done. Yeah, once you release it, that's <laughs> it. You've submitted it. That's like, not really related to DVDs. Yeah, but, like, but you can't take a test and then change your answer once <laughs> yeah. you passed it in that's it because then it gets confusing when it's like we haven't all seen the same version Mm -hmm. and also critics like people are critiquing it based off what (laughs) came in you can't just change it after the fact because people notice something like yeah i don't know i think that's really lazy i mean even like cowards with breaking dawn they misspelled um kellen lutz's name oh yeah on the dvd emmert emmert (laughs) oh yeah emmert emmert's name and then they changed it. Yeah. <laughs> Show us the original version, you cowards. I know. <laughs> okay. Own your mistakes. Let's get into commentary on the commentary. Yes. New Moon. Um, the movie. So, my first note here is that it started with the moon, you know, which we see how it slowly wanes, and then we get the title. And Chris White said that he decided to do this because he expected people would be screaming in the theater at this time so they almost needed that you know moment to just let themselves freak out and i think it totally worked remember being yeah. in the theater and being like oh my god oh it my did. god we well, talked about this in the last scene how he's like i'm totally manipulate manipulating the audience's emotions right now he's good at that mm-hmm. he knew how to do it for sure and then my next note is that when we have that a grandmother swan oh, yeah. scene. Apparently, Rob originally, Rob slash Edward was originally sparkling in the reflection of the mirror, but then Stephanie called him and was like, that doesn't go with the mythology. Because apparently vampires can't sparkle in mirrors. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why that would be. Yeah, wouldn't it just be the reflection? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. So they had to take it out. <laughs> They did all that CGI work, and then they had to undo it. Nobody would have even noticed. (laughs) No. No one would have. I'm sure maybe some people. I like... I loved... (laughs) When they're talking about the Rob Edward parking lot scene, Mm -hmm. when he's walking... Sorry if I skipped ahead of something, but walking towards Bella, and in slow motion, and then Rob does this little smile. He looks down and then looks up, Mm -hmm. and Chris White was like... I always knew that would happen. Like, talking about the effect that smile would have. Yeah, because the audience is going crazy. Yeah. And then Edward smiles. Yeah. It's like Edward's reacting to the audience. Yeah, he's like, I always knew that would happen. Yeah, he's giving funny. himself credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, this is another example of my... Ge- no, he said, this is another example of my genius when Taylor lifts the dream catcher and yeah. blocks Edward oh, to oh, show yeah, that yeah, he's yeah. a threat. And it was funny, he joked that the dream catcher is this evil dream catcher. Like, once Jacob gives it to Bella, that's when everything starts going wrong in her yeah, life. Yeah, he said you could see this movie as that being the plot, that she yeah. gets a cursed dream catcher. Yeah, I never thought of it that <laughs> yeah. way. I literally never thought of everything it. Everything does go downhill after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right away. Mm-hmm. They talked about how they changed Edward's car from Twilight to New Moon. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't understand why they couldn't just use the same exact car i don't know i mean didn't they yeah they probably could have gotten the same car if they put in more effort but yeah i think they rented it yeah it just seemed like they couldn't someone, get the exact one and then didn't somebody trace down that car and buy it yeah i think a guy at the festival <laughs> <laughs> from yeah. a twilight and forks festival yeah. a guy had it and what was the license plate cold one, cold one. yeah is that the car though or was it just the same model. oh i don't know i want to sure a woman bought it oh yeah i think so but anyway i don't know why they couldn't get the same model Volvo or same year or something and they didn't want anyone to notice so they just had they just have a black one now. yeah just a whole new car i don't think we would have noticed i mean maybe some people would have but yeah i have always thought about that though like why does edward have a new car yeah i mean i, I, I think it. it is believable that the collins would just yeah have a brand new car but the books, they're, the mythology, the mythology, mythology. <laughs> it says silver Volvo. <laughs> they couldn't have CGI'd it. 
I know. <laughs> They're CGIing left and right. They're going to just change the color. They CGI the car. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. Chris White seems to have quite an art history background or something. Yes. And was really referring to art throughout the whole movie. And he was saying how the coloring of it all, he wanted it to be romantic Mm -hmm. and have a pre-Raphaelite painting vibe. Very sophisticated comment. And I liked, too, how he talked about... Now, this is jumping ahead kind of a bit, but... Yeah, you're way more... Sorry, but it just ties into what I'm talking about with the birthday party scene, Mm -hmm. how the family's all arranged as if it's like an 18th century family portrait, Yeah, it was very purposeful. Yeah, and he wanted it to look like Mm. a portrait, I guess, and I think it worked. Yeah, I like that because I always thought they were just kind of randomly standing standing around (laughs) because they don't know what to do. (laughs) Yeah, and in Carlisle's office, he was like, oh, that's a... I can't remember what... the artist name yeah. was, but was referring to all the art. And He's a very smart man, Chris yeah. White. It's very smart very man. Very cultured. Very <laughs> smart man. <laughs> okay, back to whatever. Oh, I was going to say in the school, first of all, I love how they're like, lovely smock Alice <laughs> for her outfit. <laughs> like, kind of making fun of her. Alice, which is that art class. Yeah. Uh, and then also the line, can't trust vampires, trust me, that was Rob ad-libbing there. And then they mm. said that Rob subsequently didn't like that line but they liked it so they kept classic it classic rob yeah but who even knows if rob was being honest when he says he doesn't like i it? know he probably just, did like it just trying to be modest yeah oh it wasn't even that good stupid <laughs> yeah. line she cut that line stupid oh. stupid <laughs> <laughs> i also liked how they were joking how bella's not grateful for her presence yeah and they were like oh Kristen was just in a bad mood that day. <laughs> oh. and then he didn't even take it back yeah no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> well he told some story about how at the premiere, he ate Kristen burger. Stewart's burger that she left on the table. And he then mentioned it, like, twice. He mentioned it. At the first time, I thought it was a, just a silly joke. Yeah. And then the second time he brought up eating Kristen's burger, I was like, wait, maybe this happened. Okay. I don't think it was a big deal. I, I mean, he's married, and he sounded in love with his wife. I don't know where, how they're doing now, because this mm-hmm. is a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but you know. You know, guys. Um, <laughs> But he sounded enamored with Chris and Stuart. Yeah, he did. He talked a lot about how she looked, that she looked really pretty. Yeah. And I'm jumping around a lot here, but was at one point, he <laughs> talked about her eyes. And he wanted to say they were beautiful. She has these, what did he say? Special eyes. Special. Yeah. He yeah. took a long pod. Special. Hazel eyes. Like, yeah. <laughs> never want to say beautiful. I wouldn't say anyway. they're hazel. I would say they're green. But yeah. But... He talked a lot. I mean, she's great. I, I, I see why. He talked a lot about her performance and just mm-hmm. how awesome she was. So I almost feel like if this burger story... Yeah, I think it's true. I'm not saying yeah. he's a liar, but he... I think he likes Kristen, so he was, like, horrified that he... Ate her burger. Ate her burger. Yeah. He was probably, like, annoyed. Yeah. And so, you it's, know, you when you do that, you just, like, kind of keep, like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, like, you, you just, just always think it about it. Like, <laughs> Kristen... <laughs> Probably is forgotten about it, but you're like embarrassed. Oh my god! That's just my guess. Yeah, that's funny that she le- just left her burger sitting there and came back to it and was like, "Where'd it go?" I know. <laughs> is she a vegetarian? I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think she is. Actually, she is. I think she goes so... through. I definitely think she goes <laughs> through phases of dietary restrictions. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking that. Yeah. I was wondering, Garden Burger? Garden Burger. Or regular burger. <laughs> um, anyway. I, but you know what? I will say, everyone who we've talked to who has known Kristen or worked with her has been enamored with her. I mean, yeah, we yeah, are yeah. too. Like, you Rimses? know, when we went to the festival, everyone who we asked had nothing but positive things to say. Preston, who we interviewed, great things. Kristen freaking sent us a video. Yeah, she's the best. She's the best. Like, she... I love her. Really, everyone who we talk to, I think, adores her, and I've not heard any negative things about her at all. Me neither. She sounds like Never. the nicest person. The other day when you said I reminded you of Kristen Stewart, just uh, because of the way I said something, yeah. that was <laughs> such a compliment to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love Kristen. 
<sighs> Kristen, if you're listening. Kristen, if you're listening. Oh, we love you. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't even have to come Taylor, on the show. You're, you're too good for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so what else? You took more detailed notes than me. Yeah, I wrote too much down. No, no, that's good. Let's see. The next thing I have is the it's after a paper cut so okay I don't know if say. yeah i do i have more in school so apparently they attempted to cut out edward's soliloquy in the classroom mm. just for time's sake but then they kept it in yeah i'm glad i'm glad they kept I'm it in i'm glad they kept it it's in a nice too. little scene i think it gives humor but it's also pretty dark and yeah. i think it ties in the romeo and juliet thing more and as they were saying later, I mean, it really is so much like Romeo and Juliet, where everything's just like the timing is just a little bit off. Like if the yeah. characters just waited a little bit more just for explanation, they wouldn't be rushing to these yeah. impulsive decisions, which are life and death. Life and death. <laughs> which we still need to read. Yeah, still yeah this read um, this episode we should say, we do polls on our Patreon, and it was between life and death and this new moon commentary, and our patrons. You guys can join if you're interested uh, for only $1 a month to be able to participate in the polls. Shameless plugging. <laughs> uh, but I'm surprised that they $1. picked the New Moon commentary. It seems it's like... commentary on a commentary. Yeah. I'm, it seems what like can we say? people aren't as interested in life and death. We have to, well, this someday is we'll have to cover though, it because it's getting close to midnight sun. Yes. When are we going to do life and death? That's the tricky thing is... We do, we <laughs> definitely will cover life and death, but with the timing of it, since we think life and death will take a little bit more time, you know, we don't want to start it too soon to Midnight Sun, because yeah. once Midnight Sun shows up, we have to drop everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, we really will. So, But, you know, we're going to cover it someday, and mm. I'm just thinking, right, thinking out loud right now, if you guys have thoughts about Midnight Sun, I mean, yeah, Midnight Sun, but if you have thoughts about life and death, Email us. Yeah. Another by toilet at gmail.com. Yeah. And, and since we'll hold we on to it. Are going to cover it. If you guys haven't read it yet, go out. Yeah. Get the <laughs> book or buy the ebook, order it, have it delivered, whatever you want to do, and get started on it so you can read along with us. Even though we might not cover it. Or don't. Yeah. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> Who knows when we'll cover it, but we will cover it. So. <laughs> no pressure. Anyways, oh, so in the. Um, birthday party scene the bloody gauze apparently upside down you can see a reflection of a wolf i never noticed that before i don't think i have either i was just about to say oh yeah i have but no i was just thinking of harry potter mm. i'm really to rewatch that yeah scene. <laughs> cool i also liked after the party do you have anything else to say for the party not till no my no i liked <laughs> how they talked about when they're in the truck and then they get out of the truck bella even though Ed, edward is physically stronger than bella and cannot be moved bella really asserts her power here by getting up and sort of pushing him backwards as she's walking asserts her dominance yeah <laughs> she's forcing him to move and apparently yeah, like the that. Uh, I love you line was 80 yard in. Uh, they didn't really say that. They yeah, really just added after added that over a breath that Kristen took and that Rob took. And that was Rob and Kristen's oh, idea yeah. because they never said I love you in the first Twilight. Yeah. I'm glad they did that. Yeah. I remember thinking it was weird they didn't say I love you in Twilight. Yeah. Because it's such a love story. They edited that so well. You would have never known that know. that didn't really... I had no idea. wasn't really said. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Does he say it back? I think he's... Yeah, he says it really quietly. Like, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm that's sad. Yeah, they talk breakup. about it as a pre-breakup conversation. Yeah. And Peter like, Lambert, editor, says he's experienced that himself. He said that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I miss that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's really realistic. I feel like sometimes yeah. TV shows, they don't really show that. It's just one big dramatic breakup that's really blindsiding yeah. a character. But usually in real life, when people break up, there's you a lot of, it. you it's know, coming. 
mini breakups that yeah. lead to the breakup. Yeah. And I really liked... Wait, are you ready for the breakup for things before it? Oh, I was going to say that Chris also said that Kristen looks better kissing than Rob does. Oh, yeah. So they yeah, shot yeah. Chris kisses from Kristen's side more often. Yeah. So think Poor Rob. Rob doesn't look good kissing. But Edward looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the shots of yeah, Edward kissing. That's not true. Yeah, I think he just loves Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for the breakup. Okay. <laughs> I really liked, I thought it was fascinating, their discussion about the breakup scene in the woods. Yeah. And just, I, I had never noticed before that they used a steady cam and that the whole breakup scene is a little bit shaky or, or moving around. And he said that it has kind of like a nauseating effect, mm-hmm. which really ties, like, that's how you feel when you're getting yeah. dumped. You feel like you're going to throw up. And he talks about how... They used a Dutch angle, which is when basically it's just sideways or the line of sight is not straight. And he said, Chris White said he doesn't usually like using Dutch angles, but uses it to show Bella's emotion. Like Edward, when the camera's on him, is like very steady, straight, Mm -hmm. calm. And then when it cuts to her, it's like falling and sideways and like her life is going down the drain and yeah it's really crazy how much thought they put into all of it and like i mean gotta watch it no it would be (laughs) that would be that scene in particular of the commentary would be so helpful in a film class yeah learning about all these different angles and just even when they cut away and you have a wide shot of bell and edward Mm -hmm. it seems very calm they're like okay like not many emotions here yeah and then you have a shot right on Kristen, and all of a sudden you're just hit with the emotions which are really pulled back Mm -hmm. Um, in the wide shot and when when you're on Edward. Yeah, and you're saying, like, we've never been tighter on Edward before. (laughs) I think never been so close, maybe, Mm -hmm. at least in New Moon. But, man, a lot of thought went into Mm -hmm. it. And it kind of surprised... It shouldn't have surprised me, but it kind of did surprise me how much Chris White's put into it. I know. Really, this movie, just down to the littlest things, Chris yeah. White's, was so thoughtful. And so thoughtful. So thoughtful. <laughs> and his execution of it. And um, I feel mm-hmm. like this movie doesn't get enough credit. It's so beautiful. Yeah. The only time I felt like he didn't really... I was like, oh, he's not really an expert Twilight fan, was when he kind of, like, he wasn't sure if James was his name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like, like James? James? Was James? that the guy's name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should know that. He also <laughs> seemed, at times, to not know some of the actors' names. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many to keep track of. Uh, so then, after the breakup, the Licky Lee, when it's circling, uh, possibility, possibility a shot, I thought it was interesting how they said that on the walls, there's less and less pictures yeah. with each turn of the mm-hmm. camera, and I never noticed that before, that it's, like, really, like, Bella mm-hmm. is almost dying, like, the pieces of her life are yeah. slowly falling away, and, you know, she's become a shell of a person. Yeah. There's pause. And a lot went into that scene, too. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, apparently that was a lot more CGI than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. I know. It doesn't seem that hard. (laughs) (laughs) I know. No, they had like a robot camera that like went around her. Yeah. And they had to do a lot of CGI to get the. It looks the window good. window shots outside. You can't tell. Yeah. It looks really good. It is kind of unrealistic because it doesn't really snow in that part of the area. Yeah. Especially even, not in December. Even here, like, we get a ton of snow and, yeah, it's <laughs> too, a little too much to be, like, October, November, like, such fall, and then December, December. tons of snow. Yeah. That's... I mean, sometimes it's like that. Yeah, this past year, there was actually a lot of snow in December yeah. and none really afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't really happen here Usually in New England. Usually it's 
It did snow May 9th here. Shit. Which is almost a record. That was crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Apparently, here, the latest it snowed was, like, at least on record since they've started keeping records, was May 11th, 1945. Oh, almost beat it. I know. Yeah. That'd be for Reiki if it snowed, like, May 30th. I want to put it past yeah. New England weather. I mean, it was kind of chilly today. Yeah. It's May... It was, like, 50. It's the 23rd. Something, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, but it felt like 43, according to... Did it? To the Oh, my God. I was app. not dressed warm <laughs> enough today. No wonder I was freezing out there. <laughs> yeah, it was windy today. I was wearing just, like, crop top with this, like, little denim jacket. Yeah. The wind chill in Boston, guys, <laughs> it is really strong. Uh, this is a real windy city. Yeah. This morning when I went out on that walk... I, I was thought wearing it was sandals. Be, yeah, I thought it was supposed to be really warm Did today. Did it really feel like that? I yeah. Know. I was cold, but I actually warmed up, so whatever. Wow, that's crazy. You're asking me about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I, I am. am. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is not a weather podcast. <laughs> Are there weather podcasts? <laughs> Maybe like a storm chasing podcast. <laughs> Yeah, what if there's a weather podcast where they just talk about all the different types of weather? Like, today's episode is all about sunny days. Wouldn't you run out? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I guess you could talk about weather in, like, all the different parts yeah, of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's... You could talk about crazy freak storms that have happened. Yeah, or, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I took a... In college, podcast. <laughs> in college, I went to a liberal arts school, so the science curriculum was really subpar. But we had to take one science course. I went to a liberal arts school. Did they have good science programs? Yeah. Uh, we really, it was a joke at my school. But so the only science class I took in all of college was natural disasters, and it oh my was gosh. really fun. We just like walked around and talked about tectonic plates. Wow. Yeah, I didn't learn a single thing, but I somehow got an A. <laughs> I don't even really get what liberal arts schools mean. Because, like, yours is, your school is very specified, but... Yeah. I feel like that kind of means anything. It's like, my school's called that, but science majors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't really have any mm-hmm. science majors. Anyway, mm-hmm. I feel like no one anyway. cares about that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, nothing to do with new moon commentary on the commentary. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, he says the guy who plays Quill apparently saw people lined up to audition and mm-hmm. was like, what's going on? And then a week later, he got the part. And we know from going to the Twilight Festival, Alex Moraz said that apparently a whole other wolf pack was cast. Oh, yeah. And then Chris White's had a dream and realized <laughs> that he made the wrong choice and then yeah. fired all those people and then... Crazy. We cast them all as the wolf fact that we now have in the movies. Feel bad for those guys. I know. Oh, well. <laughs> Is it Quill? I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I get them mixed up, Quill and Embry, but like, he looked, I thought he looked cool with the long hair. I had No, that is Embry. That's Embry. Yeah. Yeah. I wish he kept it. Oh, well. Well, really, if they were true to the books, doesn't Jacob grow his hair back mm-hmm. after he originally cuts it? Yeah. I prefer long hair Jacob and Embry. Yeah, I do too. But that's just me. I feel like there was less sex appeal with the wig, though. I totally disagree. I think he looks sexy when he's shirtless with the long hair. I agree. I agree with you, but I think the <laughs> studio executives. Okay, I see what you're saying. And the young girls. I can't believe I just you. said that. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. I said what? That he, he looks, looks sexy? sexy. Yeah. <laughs> like Kelly. I would never let myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm Team Edward, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, He's are we warm. ever like... I want his body on me. <laughs> I want his body on me. <laughs> Do 
throw back to our Team Jacob episode. Would we ever have a Team Edward episode? I feel like we don't necessarily no. need one since every episode. <laughs> we only had that episode out of solidarity yeah. for <laughs> the people that we offend by trashing on Jacob. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think we just wanted to be fair because yeah. we always are Team Edward. So. I like how Chris and Peter throughout the movie are like, first mistake on Jacob. Oh, yeah. Second mistake Jacob of all the like, fouls that Jacob makes in like pursuing five. Bella. Yeah. <laughs> so many romantic blunders. Yeah, like first saying Edward's name or that Colin guy anyway. First <laughs> <Yeah>. mistake. <laughs> Second mistake, trying to hold Bella's hand mm-hmm. in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. What's the third? Third mistake, was it... Trying to kiss her? I don't know. Or did Uh, they think that was a good thing? I forget. Well, obviously... Oh, wait. I don't know if this is a mistake, but when he's like, I'm begging you. Oh, yeah. In the window. They were, like, kind of pathetic. Obviously, when he picks up the phone and then hangs up. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Yeah. I was wondering during that part, why doesn't Edward doubt Jacob's intentions there? You know, he already has read Jacob's mind. Mm-hmm. He already know what Jacob's about. Why isn't he like, wait, that was Jacob Black. Well, I Can mean, I trust him? I understand he why. He was already told that Alice yeah. had a vision. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why he would think Jacob is in part with that, you know? Mm-hmm. Why would Charlie be arranging the funeral <laughs> for Harry Clearwater? Yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't his wife be <laughs> the one doing that? Maybe because she's too upset. Yeah, and he's a cop. Like, mm, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting, speaking of Charlie, so we have that scene with Charlie talking to Bella and saying sometimes you just have to love the one you're with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is advice my mom once gave one of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> and awkwardly and then the next scene jacob and bella are in the car and bella looks at jacob and that's supposed to be bella considering her father's advice mm-hmm. yeah i think i got that before they said yeah. that yeah yeah i feel like you can see it she's sort of thinking about how she feels about him. Mm. I don't know if this is before or after, but I thought it was interesting that the movie that she sees with with Jessica is called The Dead Come Back, and it says that on the, you know, sign outside. And they chose that title to be kind of like a nod to Edward and how she wants him to come back. Yeah, and, and how this is... I never is... thought about that the first time she's gonna get the apparition yeah of edward he does come back yeah yeah that's true i had one more thing before that so sam he's wearing extra long shorts and apparently (laughs) that's because his stunt double had a knee brace from an injury so they had to cover that up (laughs) The shorts are really awkwardly extra long. Yeah, I, I feel like I've noticed <laughs> that before. They're like capris. Because he kind of looks like a dweeb. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's weird. Why does this stunt double have a knee brace? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know. I guess that doesn't stop you from doing stunts. Speaking of stunt doubles, apparently during the motorcycle scene, Kristen's stunt double was a dude. I could flies tell, off the mo- I could I not like tell if they were joking before. or being serious. I feel like I had known that. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's a dude. I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> hmm, what's and, next? Well, skipping ahead. So then the second movie in this movie, uh, Face Punch, I guess, that was a movie that Chris White and his brother used to always joke about being just a shitty action movie title. Mm. And they had a list of just shitty action movies, but apparently so many of those were real movies. Wow. And the title was between either Face Punch or Kill Hunt. I like Face Punch more. Me too. Kill Hunt. Face Punch. Boo! Choo! <laughs> faces! Like, we want to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they joke, Charlie, I mean, uh, Chris and Peter joke about... Uh, 
like how all these people are getting murdered in Forks and they say like, why is Charlie going fishing? Why isn't he on the case? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Doesn't care. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so are we now at the Jacob breakup scene yet? Yeah, I am. Okay. I thought it was super interesting that, you know, the scene when Jake has short hair and she's like, you're breaking up with me. You got your hair. Yeah. Got a tattoo. (laughs) That um, that was all re-recorded dialogue. Yeah. Because the rain messed up with the audio. Can't tell. Can't tell. I, that I never knew. That be really hard to match it up. Yeah. I feel like just the way you pronounce something, you might not necessarily know that that's how you move your mouth. And it I don't know. It must be like, hard. I know. I feel like it would be hard to match it up completely the same way. I think, okay, this is back. I'm just remembering that... I remember after the breakup, the Edward breakup, Mm -hmm. the real breakup, that Peter said something about how he loved how Kristen looked because she looked haggard and, like, bad. Yeah. I was just shouting out the makeup people, but I I agree. I agree. Yep. (laughs) But at first I thought he was just saying how good looking she was but then that was the point he was making i actually yeah. always loved bella's style in new moon i know it's like nothing special but i always liked the skinny jeans and the converse oh, that too, she yeah. wears i like her style too i waste a lot of my middle school mm-hmm. looks off that i really love how she looks during the rainy jacob breakup scene her yeah me eyes too. look kind of puffy i don't know yeah. i just love it <laughs> Yeah, I think it looks perfect. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, gosh, I can't imagine how cold that must have been. They they keep saying throughout the commentary, like, more torturing of the actors. Yeah. That must have been so cold for I poor know. Taylor Lautner, shirtless. Naked. Yeah, basically <laughs> naked in the cold Vancouver, I think, March, March. weather with fake <laughs> cold rain yeah. pouring down and it's not like regular rain because they have to make it even heavier for it to show up on camera yeah. and so that must have been crazy so brutal i'm surprised that more actors don't get sick from stuff like that but he said that you could kind of tell at points that taylor's shivering but he likes to think of it as just like a uh, passion passion <laughs> yeah. yeah like how the wolves start to lose control mm-hmm even though she doesn't know yet that he's a wolf. Um, I loved when Chris White said, some of our diamond shots are not the best. Yeah. <laughs> About Edward Sparkling. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I owned up to it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really notice. I didn't have a problem with that. They're, you know, at I love... At least tried. At least they yeah, tried. at least they tried. <laughs> Unlike and, in Breaking Dawn. Yeah, I know. And, you know, I freaking love the first movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. But it looks better than Twilight, so Mm -hmm. he should be proud. Yeah. Doesn't look like sweat. Yeah, it looks a little (laughs) bit sweatier. They also got rid of that sound effect, I think, that used to always play. Yeah. It's like twinkling. I never (laughs) thought that We're moving our fingers. Yeah. sound on youtube i'll put it in i'm just a sweaty guy bella (laughs) remember we wondered if that hurt Catherine hardwick's feeling yeah (laughs) oh Catherine. it just looked like sweat anyway so apparently in the laurent scene they kept saying laurent yeah uh, apparently the aberration of edward there it's mapped onto a candle flame apparently the whole movie oh the whole movie oh okay that's very interesting it you is. can tell. So artistic. Oh, I did want to say here, I left a note because I made a Mother's Day post on Instagram with Renee and uh, Bella and who's the other mom in the series? Oh, Esme. <laughs> and yeah. Someone commented, like, you should have included 
<laughs> Emily and Rosalie. And Rosalie, I get why I would have included, but Emily, like, <laughs> I don't get why I would have put Emily in here just because she know. takes care of her husband. That <laughs> yeah. makes her the mom and of the these wolf boys. <laughs> yeah, I brought that up during the movie. <laughs> Fully grown adults that she's not related to. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about that though, like how. It's weird how she's just mothering the whole wolf I know, pack. and they don't <laughs> seem to have jobs. Yeah. Or help out. They just <laughs> run around. <laughs> well, that'd be offensive if I included her in the Mother's Day post. <laughs> she's not their mom. They actually have moms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember there being a plot about, like, her wanting kids. Yeah. But the wolf thing, like, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess, like, seems random. Like, I, why not include Alice? yeah. Well, why would I? I know, you but know? like, why include Emily if you're not gonna include? I guess I could have included female. Sue Clearwater. That would have made sense. But that's then true. that's too much of a stretch. I'm not just gonna include <laughs> every single mom in the series. <laughs> Are there any other ones? Um, um, there must be. There must be. Are there no other moms? <laughs> Well, I guess technically Mike Newton's mom is in the book, but we don't really see her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just have a picture of the page. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Newton. Yeah. <laughs> Next uh, year, we have to get everybody. Okay, wait. In the um, in the movies, though, there is Riley Beers' mom. <laughs> I could have gotten a shot of her in what? the police station oh. talking to wait, Charlie. Wait, I just thought of one. Oh, what? The Denali woman. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That flashback when yeah. she gets murdered. <laughs> that would have been funny to say How could you forget her? Possible mom. Yeah, I mean, she made the ultimate sacrifice for being a mother. <laughs> That's true. She's the ultimate mom in this series. Yeah. Oh, there's got to be one more mom. There's got to be somebody in the Breaking Dawns. No, because, I mean, they're all vampires. Yeah. Well, you know, because this man's not the really their mom or something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Chris kept saying vampire. A vampire. For some reason. Cute. <laughs> so, I'm at the montage now when she cliff dives. They apparently rob it to put weights in his pockets <laughs> for when he's floating um, next Underwater. to Bella. <laughs> yeah. And Kristen didn't like that and didn't want to do it. So they, like, shot her from the side or something. Yeah. But Chris Weitz was like, oh, it's not that hard. And so he put weights in his pockets and went down to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> but then, like, almost had a panic attack. That would be really scary. I think that is kind of dangerous to have does an actor do. Why would they do that? Apparently they did that in Rocket Man as well. Oh, really? When he's at the bottom of the pool. I hope they didn't do that with a child, though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was CGI, because wasn't the kid just kind of sitting there? Yeah, it didn't like really on the look piano. Like, yeah. I guess, do they do it so you don't just naturally start floating up or moving I around? I think so, yeah. that, And you can only do it for a little bit. How do you get back up? You, you just have to swim have really hard? take the weights out of your pocket, oh. I'm assuming, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I hope it's not that deep, though. I hope it's I just kind of a shallow. I liked the part around then during the, you know, Victoria's chasing that Bella. Mm -hmm. No, she's just in the woods. The whole, yeah, scene with Charlie and yeah. <laughs> Harry Clearwater like, has oh, his heart attack, and Charlie's friend died. <laughs> Chris <laughs> says, which is V sad, don't laugh, because Peter Lambert's like laughing for some reason. And we remarked that I had never heard anyone say V to mean very back in like 2009. Yeah, I thought that was a new thing. Yeah. I would say, I feel like I thought that that became popular in like 2014. Yeah, me too. V sad. V sad. V V sad. Don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, they were laughing. They were like, Charlie's friend died. <laughs> <laughs> and then they talked about how when Bella learns that Harry Clearwater had a heart attack, that that's a really hard line to say, even though I just said it pretty oh, yeah. well. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. There's so many H's. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. 
I mean, say it five times fast. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. It's a. It's not it's that not hard. hard. In the moment, we thought it was hard too. Yeah. Though. I feel like the had a part had a feels weird. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. I guess if you're thinking about it, it is kind of hard. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. <laughs> what if we put that on a shirt? Just like five times. <laughs> Harry, Clearwater. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a I feel like you start to say it with a Boston accent. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Harry Clearwater had a heart attack. Had a heart attack. Had a heart attack. Um, let's see. What else? You know, Jake brings her home. And <laughs> get her home. <laughs> In the truck. Uh, when they almost kiss, Bella makes this sighing noise, and apparently it was actually Jacob's. Or Taylor Lautner is sighing. Yeah, but they just switched it to make it sound like it came from yeah. Kristen. That is weird. So, yeah. <laughs> and then one of them said, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the magic of movie making, that they could do that. The magic of sound. Literally yeah. change the sigh to make it seem like yeah. it came from someone else. Like, that is so yeah. genius. So that's when he's like... <sighs> Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. It's weird that that was Taylor. I don't know. I know. It just sounds like it was Kristen. Uh, imagine being an actor and then you see stuff like that when you go to the premiere and it's like, that's wow, weird. like they really just take your performance and make mm-hmm. it their own in a way. I know. You might feel like they it wasn't things. even you Yeah. <laughs> in the movie. It's kind of like when you write something and then you see how they edit it and you're like, I didn't write this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Uh, they said that they chose a kiss or an almost kiss for Belle and Jacob that was the least torturous. So it wasn't really just like mm, kind of, you know, she... Super emo. Yeah. It yeah. was supposed to be like she really is considering it for real. And mm. you, I think they pulled that off. Like, you really do believe that she... Yeah. Is about to be with Jacob. I think he said he didn't want it to be like talk to the hand. Yeah, yeah. It wanted mm, to be sincere. No. Also, sorry, it's not doing it right now, but my chair's oh, I just did it. My chair's really squeaky. It's okay. Keep moving a little bit. No. But I hope you guys appreciate it. <laughs> just like the song Slow Life on the New Moon soundtrack. I'm pretty sure there's a creaky chair in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> That's so it's on theme. On purpose. <laughs> I had a note here, not related to the commentary, but when Alice comes back, I really realized, sorry, but (laughs) (laughs) Ashley Green is kind of a weak actor in the series. Sorry. And I really wish that, I mean, we've heard some negative things about Ashley Green from people we've spoken to. just listening. Sorry, Ashley. (laughs) Just from some people. We can't, you know, we don't know her. Can't name names. Yeah, but you can really tell that, like, Ashley doesn't have great chemistry with Kristen. And I think it's a huge shame that they don't, I mean, not that they don't get along. We don't know that. But they just don't seem to really vibe naturally, which I think is a shame because I feel like you kind of lose the Bella and Alice relationship in the series. They're supposed to be best friends. Yeah, and it really doesn't feel that strong in the series. What? What is that? Is that your, t- your laptop? Wait, that is so scary. <laughs> How is it playing? Sorry, guys. That was really creepy. Mel's laptop just started playing a show out of nowhere while it was closed. Yeah, that was... And it's been closed for hours. Weird. Uh, okay. If somebody knows an explanation for how that could happen, yeah, um, let us know because I'm so freaked out right now. Because oh. it was playing Elite, which is a show on Netflix, and it was like this dramatic music playing in Spanish speaking. It was weird. I literally thought the sound was coming from like under the table, which yeah. doesn't make sense, but I was like, where is that this talking really coming creepy. from? Because it's not, it wasn't playing this whole time. Yeah. You know, it was in the middle of an episode I was watching about four hours ago. What the heck? What the heck? Oh, scary. Yikes! Okay, anyway, back to commentary on the commentary. Uh, yeah, so Ashley Green, kind of a weak actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish um, V 
played her? Me too. Who plays her at Forever Dwelling Forks Festival? Yes. But, you know. Oh well. <laughs> My next note is that apparently they originally cut out the scene of Edward talking to the little Tory. Yeah, Because they so wanted weird. the first time you see him in real life, I guess, to be when Bella sees him under the clock tower. But I'm happy they cut that in because they were saying it sort of adds something to the build up of the yeah. chance of them getting there. Yeah. And I do think it would have been like, what do you put there? Just more of them like driving or more of yeah. them playing? Like that would have been too much filler. Like I think mm-hmm. that that does add more suspense. And by the time they're there, it does feel like we know the Volturi decently well mm-hmm. in a way. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I I'm glad they kept it. Mm, they said that they tried to save red for the end for mm-hmm. Volterra, which Mel did point out there is red in New Moon, like her truck and the blood and Jacob's house. But those things they really couldn't control. Well, I bet they, they just like have... for outfits or things like that they tried not to have red. Yeah, I mean Jacob's house, you don't see it in Twilight. It could have been any color in the movie. But I don't remember this, but I think he said it was, like, described that in the book. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Mm, I don't know. You know, Stephanie's not going to let them change that. <laughs> <laughs> the mythology. The mythology. No, it's not mythology. <laughs> but, yeah. And he talked about how he really, again, wanted the vibe of the movie to be, like, gold and red. Romantic. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, they talked about, so when Edward reveals himself and he sparkles, you have this cute little girl who sees and they said that they decided to do that to show some sense of threat you know what would be the odds that this happens and no one witnesses that yeah. and that would be really kind of stupid like yeah oh wow I like that would have been really you know not that important no one's even looking at him but mm-hmm. it's you know not a real big threat because no one would believe this little girl and they were joking about how she well they wanted her to look surprised or shocked, but she just was smiling the whole time because she was so excited to just be in the movie. Yeah. And they jumped like, oh, poor little girl's going to get assassinated <laughs> by the bold story. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. But that's hmm. funny. And apparently the scene where Rob and Kristen, I mean, Bella and Edward, are, you know, kissing, reunited at last, was filmed in City Hall and Multipichano. I guess people were really working that day, you know. Yeah. It's interesting. And I liked how Peter Lambert's an epic, epic kiss. Yeah, it is an epic <laughs> kiss. Honestly, I think it might be the best kiss yeah. in the whole series. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Would you say that that's the best kiss in the series? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably prom second place. Mm, I don't know the prom kiss is that great i think it's just more the whole scene Mm, i guess so no the kiss is nice what do you think's the second best kiss oh the bedroom one in twilight the first kiss oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're right forgot (laughs) (laughs) and the eclipse bedroom scene is pretty good oh yeah that's really good too yeah definitely the twilight that one it's so good, but it teases me so oh my much. God, that one it is freaking so kills hot. me. The way he like, uh, like jumps. I know. Or not jumps, but like his chest like heaves. Gets up and then like <laughs> leans into her, and they like yeah. lie down. Like you think they're gonna do it right there, and then it ends She's right like, away. Underwear. It's so hot. It's the biggest tease in the world. Yeah, it drives me nuts. Oh my Gets me God. all bothered. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was funny. He's talking about Felix. Yeah. Comes in. Apparently he's six foot eight, which is crazy. That's he's so very tall. Freaking tall. But I joked that he's not threatening at all no, though. He's not. He's just not, especially in Eclipse, but he's just not scary. No, you can tell he's a really nice guy. Apparently yeah. he's Canadian. They said that. Like, he's such a nice guy. I'm like, yeah, you can tell. Like, yeah. He doesn't he does not seem like a scary vampire. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And you think he should be if he's six foot eight. <laughs> Not, not we've said this before i'm sorry we're being bitches but not the best actor <laughs> sorry no, oh and they, what did he say like evil little dakota fanning or something yeah i think it's so crazy that dakota fanning was in these movies random yeah it's funny because then she worked with Kristen on the runaways 
they were BFFs for a hot second. For a hot sec, yeah. I for a minute. Oh, uh, one more thing about the kiss is apparently Kristen, in between shots, would run around so that way in the shot she was very authentically out of breath. Interesting. Very interesting. I liked when we finally see the Volturi's lair, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Chris White was like, this is a painting, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he really so, wanted it to look like a painting. And it does. so into art history yeah. and, and everything. A, apparently they used smoke on the set to make the background look sort of hazy. And like a little bit out of focus of the foreground, which is really sharp and clear. I never Crazy. knew that. I never noticed that. But it, I think it does have a nice effect. It does have, it does look like the air is dusty or mm. something. I was thinking when we were watching this, how fun would it have been to be Robin Kristen and to get to fly to Italy or oh, just anyone been the so crew cool. to shoot this? And yeah. He was talking. Chris White's talking about. Oh, I was eating pasta. I was just thinking that. You know, like I know they're there for work, but what a fun business trip that so is. So cool. Yeah. Wow. And that must have been you know, not to talk about Robinson, but the beginning of their relationship that must have been so romantic. They're in, in Italy. Italy. Wow. I mean, that must have been, like, really a big moment for them. It must have been. <laughs> this is just a general thing. Peter Lambert, again, the editor, was talking about music, like, the entire movie, mm-hmm. which I liked. I appreciate it. But he really was excited about that. He was always talking about the score and how awesome it was. And he, he was like, oh, I just love this part. And he was talking about during the fight scene at the Volturi how interesting it is that there's no music during the fight and mm-hmm. how that's not very common. Like, usually they cover that up with, yeah. you know, action scenes have dramatic music. But I do think it's cool. I'm happy there wasn't music. I feel like it could have been really cheesy. I agree. Yeah. Be too much. Yeah. And you have all this cool sounds of everything going yeah. on. Like, the floor breaking and things cracking. and It does feel m- more real mm-hmm. and... I mean, yeah, they make it out fine, but it does feel like there's stakes when you hear everything like that. Yeah. When there's really exciting music, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like something's actually going to happen. Yeah, I agree. You know? It seems like it's already, the heroic moment has already happened, Mm -hmm. because you've seen stuff like that a million times in other movies. Oh my gosh, and (laughs) he's talking about Marcus. Oh, yeah. Sexy Beast Marcus sexy and how not without cause should become a meme. <laughs> not without cause. <laughs> mm-hmm. She knows too much. Not without cause. She's a liability. We're saying very memorable lines. From the Volturi. <laughs> From the Volturi here. Isn't possibly one too? The one we always say, possibly. No, that's Jasper. That's Jasper. Sorry. In Breaking I'm Dawn. sorry. Yeah. Oh, I messed up. Possibly. <laughs> it seems like line. something Caius would say, but yeah. no, it's Jasper. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, messed up. But yeah, he he gets it. He gets the Marcus appeal. You already know what you're going to do, Harry. <laughs> she knows too much. She's a liability. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Chris Weiss. He said that the only moment of unintentional laughter... In the movie was in the vision of Bella and Edward running, which, yeah, I feel like people laughed when I first saw that. I don't understand why. I don't, I take it very seriously. (laughs) Shut up, shut up. They think it's because Rob runs like a girl. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's like flowy music and it it just feels, you have this heavy fight scene and then it cuts to just something so light that I think it's a little bit jarring. The music, I think, might have something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. It feels a, good a little point. bit too perfect. Yeah. I love the way they look, though. I so wish Breaking Dawn, they should have put Bella in that same exact outfit. It would have... I will die on that argument. I will, too. <laughs> Not without call. Apparently, when they're back in Belle's bedroom, when they arrive back from Volturi, they say, uh, I can't live without you. Or I can't live in a world where you don't exist. And there mm-hmm. wasn't a kiss, but the studio executive said that they have to kiss after a line like that. Mm. So like, they do. So they do. And I'm glad. 
And then my next note, this is the craziest thing in the whole movie. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Guys, did you know that the Coens have a swimming pool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never noticed. I never, ever, ever noticed that never. before. In the, when they're all voting in the Coens living room or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's a swimming room pool yeah. in the background. You can see in the background. Because he made some comment about, what did he even say? Like, oh. He said, like, Bella wakes them up, and he goes, oh, wait, no, they're not asleep. They're just standing around. And then he says, uh, oh, Maybe they're swimming. swimming in the swimming pool. And then yeah. he says, oh, they probably don't do that for fun. Yeah, and I thought he was just making random crap up, and then we noticed, like, wait, there's actually a pool <laughs> in the background. There is a pool. Why don't they ever swim? Yeah. Why has there never been any mention of this? Why haven't Edward and Bella taken a dip? Well, why do they a dip? have a swimming pool? Because they, they said they probably don't swim for fun, but I bet they do. They must. I mean, what else can they do? They must swim. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it, though. Swimming, a lot of times swimming is an activity for exercise or to cool off in the summer and... The vampires don't really need either of those two things. It's fun to float. Yeah, float it's relaxing. Is fun. Yeah, it's fun to swim underwater. It feels like an adventure. Yeah, I think they still would. Yeah, I, I think imagine. they would still. But I was saying swim. It's interesting that the pool is open that time of year, and Kelly says, "Well, of course, like they can swim any temperature, but wouldn't the water be frozen?" Well, I say, of course, they have a heated pool. Oh, true. True, true, true. You can have a pool all year, Mel. Yeah, true. When my family first got a pool, actually, we were so excited, but they built it in the fall, or Mm -hmm. it opened right, like, September something, so we didn't really get that summer to first swim in it. Yeah. So, my dad was so excited to have the pool that he just heated it a shit ton, and we swam in it in New England weather in November. Wow, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. And we thought we were going to do that every single year, but then we didn't. Did it cost a ton? Probably. But we didn't, but the thing is, we didn't use it yes. in the summer, so that was kind of yeah. making up for it in a way, but I mean, it still costs a lot to build the pool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet they just, since they're rich, heat it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even know they had a pool, so I don't know. But I like it. I like that detail. <laughs> Well, My last thing is in the proposal, Chris mm-hmm. told Rob to be flirtatious and a little bit nervous there. Mm-hmm. He's about to drop a big bomb, and they were kind of modeling it off of uh, Darcy. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I can see that. I can see the direction he took. I have one condition to get you, for me to change you myself. And then forever. That's what I'm asking for. I don't know the lines. I don't know the lines. Don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm asking for? Yeah. I thought it was cute that Chris White said he always wanted the movie to end at an intake of breath. And he mm-hmm. said, I don't know why. And then Peter Lambert was like, well, breathing it's what makes her human yeah <laughs> he just like, came up with just it, it out of yeah the ass, but it yeah. works yeah it's cute i don't know why chris wanted that to be yeah. the end he just pictured it that way well i think was it, it not in the script it kind of matches the audience's reaction because even though you yeah. read the book and you know it's coming i still was shocked i, I was, was shocked oh my gosh anymore yeah <laughs> i know what's gonna happen next what <laughs> i know <laughs> I always think the movies are going to go off course. Like, I, I really thought that in Eclipse. Yeah. For some reason. Uh, that would have been great. <laughs> I'm so gullible. But I remember, I've already said this on the podcast, which is being like, oh my god, they're going to do it. They're not following <laughs> the books. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, in the last movie, definitely, they tricked me. They do know how to manipulate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so much goes into those movies. I mean, yeah. really, it's so well done, too. Mm-hmm. It really it is. It makes me sad if Rob really doesn't like the movies and isn't proud he of them. He does. Yeah. We know. He, he's said a zillion times recently about how they're like art house. Yeah. Which apparently can be a derogatory term for a film because <laughs> oh, wow. um, we watched the movie Ghost World Friday night. 
was that really yesterday? Yeah, yeah yesterday, <laughs> and my sister, it was my choice, and my sister hated it, and was like, so I didn't like your art house indie film. Yeah, then we got in a big blowout <laughs> fight with this, but Kelly and I were on the same side, so wow. that's nice. That it's always nice. two against two. <laughs> We're not always nice. on the same side, so it was, mm. it was nice. <laughs> it was it was very nice. <laughs> and you know what? We don't want to fight about it anymore. But I just mentioned that because Rob thinks art house is a compliment. Yeah, exactly. So Caitlin, <laughs> take note. <laughs> Sorry, Caitlin, we love you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, if you are listening, she might. Yeah, hate she might me not now. have a spite, but once. <laughs> gets over it she will be listening Mm because she is a loyal listener and sister so we love you caitlin and we are glad that you have forgiven us (laughs) and we forgive you as well and didn't say sorry what didn't say sorry oh yeah well we still forgive you (laughs) (laughs) we still forgive you even though some oops sometimes you have to forgive people even when they're not sorry sometimes but not too often yeah but sometimes a lot of times forgiveness, yeah, it's about the other person, but sometimes it's for you. Yeah, well, they say it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Mm. Have wow. you heard that before? No, I haven't. Yeah. What, is that from Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> no. Well, actually, it could be. It really could be. <laughs> What's it from? I'm sure Grey's Anatomy has at least plagiarized that quote. <laughs> Is it just a general saying? Yeah, I've heard yeah. it. I wow. Heard. Somehow I've never heard it in all my years. Forgiveness. <laughs> Such a silly word. Forgiveness. It's more than saying sorry. What is forgiveness, really? I I so Letting I s- go. I know. But if you forgive and you don't forget... I feel like forgetting sometimes prevents you... Not forgetting is kind of what prevents you from fully forgiving. Yeah. Like, sometimes I do think that forgiveness is a little bit out of your control. Like, you can tell yourself that you forgive, but you really don't forgive. Yeah. And you know what? If you don't want to forgive, don't don't make yourself forgive. Yeah. I still have hard feelings towards my ex-boyfriend. And (laughs) from, like, earlier last year. From last year. And some days I'm like... Because he never really said sorry. Mm-hmm. And some days I'm like, I forgive him. Mm-hmm. And then other days, no. Yeah, I feel the same way yeah. about former friends. Yeah. Sometimes I still have so much bitterness towards them. It's hard when someone doesn't say sorry. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, does it really... What would it really do? Forgiving them? To get that apology, I mean. Yeah. I mean, some people you never are going to get an apology yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, some people who I, I don't necessarily forgive them, but at the same time, their resentment isn't really, really having a major impact on my life. Yeah. It's just when I hear their name, I'm like, ugh, hate that yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. It feels good to let go, though. Yeah. But, but sometimes I almost feel like forgiveness for me, so some mm-hmm. of these same people I'm talking about, I have forgiven in the past, mm-hmm. and then I realize I shouldn't have. So, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> I almost feel like sometimes holding on to the anger, that might be the only thing that's keeping you from letting in toxic people. Mm. But isn't it true to err? Is human to forgive is divine? I guess so. <laughs> well, and also, there is a poem, a spoken word poet, poem by this guy, Stephen something. He says something like, gosh, I don't even know. I don't like I shouldn't even bring this up because I don't know. But just... He has a thing about Paraphrase. forgiveness, and it's it's like, just think about a time that you've desperately wanted to be forgiven, and you weren't, and realize that you can grant that to somebody else. Mm. But what if they don't even yeah, want to be exactly forgiven? <laughs> they don't, be. That's they the don't give a fuck. I think if someone is truly sorry and wants yeah. forgiveness, then... It is beautiful to give that. By all means, give it if they really, truly understand. Yeah. But if they don't, like, really, what is the point of forgiving yeah. someone when they... Do not even know they did any wrong. Yeah. Do they really deserve it? No. Yeah. I think you can... It's healthy to let go of the hate on your side. Mm-hmm. But you don't need to, like, text them randomly and be like, I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 
Or, yeah, I mean, if you want to, that's really nice. But it would also be kind of weird to get that if you weren't sorry. You yeah. know? Like, okay. what? Remember what? that uh, screen, <laughs> screenshot that we saw where some, <laughs> some girl texted her ex, like, hey, thinking about you, hope you're doing well. And then the guy responded, didn't I cheat on you twice? Love, Love yourself. yourself. <laughs> That was amazing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so self-aware. Yeah. No, but I was also just thinking, yeah, like that girl. But I don't know if I upset somebody, but I actually stood by what I did and like didn't feel sorry. And then someone reached out to me and was like, I forgive you for that. And I was like, um... Yeah, I was like, like, I don't need to be forgiven. (laughs) I don't know. I also hate apologizing when I don't, when I truly don't think I'm wrong. Sometimes you have to do it, but sometimes I've had friendships where I found myself always doing that. And it's like, at a certain point, you just have to stop apologizing. Mm -hmm. Because that, then you're going to believe that you're always... Yeah. Someone who needs to apologize all the time, and that's not necessarily true. true. And then the other person will believe that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys, if you find yourself in a relationship or a friendship where you're always saying sorry, take a step back and be like, What's going on here? What's going on? Why am I always yeah. sorry? Do yeah. I really need to be? And even if you are doing bad things, well, why? Like, maybe this person is not bringing out the best in you, mm-hmm. or maybe this is just not a compatibility thing yeah you know what i mean yeah know what i mean i know what you mean <laughs> how did we even start talking about forgiveness <laughs> wait what does this have to do with oh i brought up ghost world because art house art house yeah <laughs> <laughs> not related at all but Bella does forgive edward and new moon and he's yeah. genuinely sorry and i think yeah. that she that does forgive him right something. away right away she, and she forgives jacob a zillion times a zillion times in the books yeah when i don't think she really should yeah because a lot of times he's not sorry that was like the whole plot of eclipse remember like jacob messes up bella's mad she forgives him yeah jacob messes up bella's mad she forgives she him, forgives him. Mm-hmm. yeah at a certain point you have to stop forgiving yeah that's my Hmm. That's always, always something people can talk about is forgiveness. It's one of life's mysteries. Yeah, it just it's such a uh, abstract concept. <laughs> like you can say you've forgiven something, but and then you're still mad. You're still mad. So yeah. you haven't really forgiven it. Like really, it is beyond your control. Hmm. Or to... can you really put an effort? I guess, I mean, I was watching an old Oprah episode on forgiveness where people were forgiving the murderers of their loved ones. Oh my God. And they like went to meet them and you still stayed in contact with them and even like smiled for pictures with them. And at that point, I'm like, <gasps> and they said it was very therapeutic for them to realize that the murderer was a person and kind of understand why they did it and to sympathize with them oh my gosh and they said it was very therapeutic but at that point it's like i don't know like i don't know if i could ever forgive somebody for something like that's that that's crazy and i don't think i don't know necessarily know if that is healthier i mean i'm fortunately i've never been in that position but well i do think that once you let go of hate and mm-hmm. disappointment and sadness. Like, that is healthier. Yeah. For sure. Like, just on your body and your mind. Well, I but think they did. that is very new wave. Yeah. And I think it makes a difference <laughs> that those people were genuinely sorry. Yeah. Whereas if someone was just, like, a sociopath and wasn't sorry, why the <laughs> fuck would you forgive them? You're not asking for forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I'm... I'm I'm stunned. Mm -hmm. Well, forgiveness, Twilight, it all relates. It all relates. (laughs) All these abstract concepts about the human condition, you can find all of them in Twilight, (laughs) and I think that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Well, that was commentary on the commentary New Moon. Yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Thanks for listening. (laughs) We so appreciate and... You guys rule. Yeah, you guys make our day every single day. We love hearing from you, and 
we are so we're so blessed we're so so blessed it's crazy so i think blessed. about it all the time I, think about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we worked hard for what we have right so, you know, we can't feel bad about it but just have to take a step back and realize that other people are not as fortunate as us right we're quoting time. Justin, justin bieber, bieber and kendall, kendall jenner, jenner. <laughs> jinx <laughs> does he know <laughs> yeah <laughs> What so if somebody, <laughs> what if we were like actually famous and someone just took us saying that? Like stuff like that happens all the time. Yeah, they quoted it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're quoting. But we, we are so lucky yeah. to have the fandom thriving and we are. live and here with us. And love you guys. Love you guys, but we got a plan to get. Mm-hmm. Nope, we don't. Nope. <laughs> but you get it. We have a plan <laughs> To cancel. <laughs> I actually do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, guys. Love you. <laughs> I was crying. <laughs>